So I've had uh, several viewers ask me about connectors. Um, a couple questions. One is, what frequency range are they good for? Um, how do you know you have a good one? Are the Chinese ones any good? Uh, what, you know, what, what should you look out for? Is there a source of good ones? Um, so let's talk about connectors in general first. Uh, here's box number one. Um, these are kind of all low frequency type things. Uh, you know, you associate BNC with low frequency. Um, but uh, here's the truth, okay? So the lowest frequency connectors in this box um, are probably the PL259s, okay? Um, so if you're not familiar with those, they, they look like this. Um, you find them on a lot of radios, lots and lots and lots of ham radios. Um, they are specified up to 300 megahertz, okay? So you can expect these to go to 300 megahertz. So what about the BNCs? Well, believe it or not, BNCs are specified up to 4 gigahertz. Yes, 4 gigahertz. Um, so they're actually pretty good. They're a nice little coax. Uh, they're great with uh, uh, RG58 type of wire. Um, these are big ones. Uh, you know, these these big ones, PL59, they're kind of RG8 type type things. They're, they're, they're bigger. Um, okay, so that's that's kind of the lowest low frequency stuff is the uh, 300, 300 megahertz and 4 gigahertz. That's low frequency. So right from the get-go, you can kind of just say every connector other than the two, two uh, 259s, every other connector is good to 4 gigahertz. And for most home use, that's plenty good. So we can kind of skip the video from here if you, if you, if you uh, that's the only thing you need to know. All right, so the next one is the end connector. And I don't have a lot of end connectors here. I just saw one, yeah. Here's an end connector. Um, it looks like a, uh, a B and C with a bigger outside. And that might be exactly what it is. Um, let's see if I have a, if I have a female here. I need to go to box, here we go. So, so this, is what the, uh, this is what the female looks like. These are really, really robust. These are my favorite connector, the end connector. Uh, there's just nothing to go wrong. They're heavy duty. They just, they're just bulletproof. They're just great. And, uh, you know, they get a bad rap. I, I think most of the time people spec them up to 18, um, up to uh, 12 gigahertz, but I've certainly used them up to 20 gigahertz and they're just fine there. So, um, I would say 18 gigahertz is probably a good number for most of these. Most of these are made pretty well. Even the cheap Chinese ones, um, they're pretty hard to build wrong because they're kind of big. So you don't need real expensive tooling for them. So, uh, yeah, these are, these are pretty good. Maybe the Chinese ones are to 12, but the U S made ones are just up to 20 gigahertz. They're, they're, they're really, really good. All right. And then there are, you know, banana jacks and stuff. We're not going to talk about those, but, um, a couple other interesting things in this box before we go to the other box is um, <laughs> banana jack to uh, BNC. These are kind of cool. These are shielded, so it picks up the ground and it connects directly to this aluminum housing. And then there's a center conductor here that goes to the uh, goes to the BNC. So a lot of the really really old test equipment um, had BNCs on it. And uh, this is nice to put shielding around. The other way that they did it was this one. Uh, this one has a BNC in the middle, and then it has an external ground connection. So uh, you, you, this one does the same thing. It kind of shields the uh, shields the uh, BNC. So that's kind of cute. And then the ones from uh, Pomona. Pomona Electronics has all kinds of connectors. So uh, so these type of things, male and females. Um, and then these are really these are kind of rare. These are really old HP, HP things. Um, you actually have to turn the whole thing to put it on. Uh, but I really like this. They look real space age. All right. So let's take a look at box number two. Well, box number two has uh, nicer things. <laughs> I kind of keep them separated. You don't really, really bang things around. Everybody says, oh, you should put little plastic things on them. Anyway, uh, these have a lot more of end connector stuff. Um, 
And so these are nice, you know, made in USA uh, stuff. Um, you know, you can, you can get these used still. You're not gonna get them cheap, even the used ones. You know, you might pay $20, $30 for that one. Um, this one was a bit beat up when I got it, but I put it on my lathe and I burnished it. You know, I trued it up. You don't want to cut metal away, but you can burnish them back into shape and not throw away any metal. So if they have a dent in them, you can pull the dent out and still save the metal. So uh, SMA to, uh, to N. Uh, these are real nice. This is a, a real high quality one. Uh, this is super high quality end connector. This one's made by Narda. Um, and so, you know, the Narda stuff is, is like gold. Uh, so these are, these are really nice. You can just feel the heft done on there. Just really, really made well. Um, and then there are all the little SMA ones. Um, the SMA ones, um, they're definitely a big difference between U.S. made ones and Chinese made ones. The U.S. made ones are totally better. So if you can get your hands on U.S. made connectors, uh, and they're hard to find these days, but they are just really, really much better. Um, the problem of, of them is the sloppiness of the of the uh, housings and the uh, firmness of the pin. A lot of times the pins will push out and a lot of times the uh, the outer the outer screw housing is just so loose that you can put it on wrong and, and uh, bugger things up. So if you can get some USA made ones, they are they are much better. And you can see that even in the right angle right angle stuff, you know, here's here's a, these are all US made. Uh, th this one is a, a right angle, but this one is a bent right angle. This one's kind of cool. It's got an elbow. Uh, so people say these are better because they have a continuous uh, dielectric in them, whereas these have maybe two pieces of dielectric in them. But I don't know. For the for, again for home shop use, uh, you know, the little right angle ones are fine. Sometimes they're two color. Sometimes they're uh, I don't know why. Sometimes they are. Maybe for ease of uh, put. You know, having people who do assembly line stuff makes it easier for them not to screw up. Uh, there's a few other things in this box. There's some attenuators, low pass filters, uh, 50 ohm loads. 50 ohm loads come in different, or not loads, but 50 ohm terminations. Uh, here's an old HP one. Here's one ch Chinese one. Um, this is a crystal detector, so you can detect RF, turn RF into voltage. And, um, okay, so, so once again, uh, in this box, everything's good to 18 gigahertz, um, if not more. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at some cables. So you get some cables with the uh, with the instruments. Um, these are the, some real flexy ones that come with the uh, tiny SA, and you get some uh, more stiff ones. Comes with the uh, Nano VNA. Um, once again, um, the Chinese ones are just they drive me crazy. And one of the reasons they drive me crazy is here's a good example. Here's a, a, a BNC to SMA that I, I use all the time uh, for sweeping things out because my um, spectrum analyzer has a BNCs on the front and I'm always testing SMA things. So I use these. Instead of having a bunch of adapt adapters stuff, uh, stacked up, if you can do it with one cable, it's better to do it with one cable, right? So like here is a... Uh, Here's an end connector to SMA, right? So you eliminate a bunch of uh, uh, adapters if you can have a cable that, that does the job that you need. Um, so I, I had a bunch of these and I used them for quite some time. And I was happy with them for a while and then they just started to go bad on me. And the reason they went bad is that center conductor. Um, let's see, I need something to screw it onto. So if you, um, if you uh, put it in here, and it's a little bit crooked. So there's, there's, there's quite a bit of slop in the Chinese ones. And it means that you can start turning it when it's cocked. And that means that the male portion and the female portion aren't lined up right. And the centricity 
of the females can be quite a ways off because they're built kind of cheap too. So you can get them so that they go and they, they won't they won't mate. They'll, they'll, they'll hit and, and they'll kind of stall out. And then you just keep screwing them on and it just pushes that pin way up into there. And it's kind of hard to see. Can I zoom in a little bit? Uh, but that pin is gone. That pin just disappeared. And uh, I get caught all the time where these, I'll be doing a measurement and suddenly the measurement will go funky and I'll go, what happened? And it's because this pin pushed in. So I'm getting rid of, I'm getting rid of these things. Uh, they're, they, these have just driven me crazy. If I push on this cable, I, I don't know if we're zoomed in here. I, I, there. So now that little pin is out again. Um, just by pushing on the cable. So the, so the center pin is just connected to the center conductor of the cable and it just slides in and out, slides in and out. Uh, I think the good connectors, the little center pin will lock into the dielectric and it will hold in place. But um, my experience with the American, the old American made ones is that they're just really, really robust. So uh, here's an example of some US ma USA made ones. And uh, the first thing you notice is that the machining is much sharper. The, the Chinese ones are kind of real roundy. Um, and these are much sharper, like, like a machinist made these. And when you grab them and you, and you, and you try to wiggle the, the, the spinny part, you try to wiggle it, it doesn't wiggle. It's, it's concentric and it, it won't go off at a funny angle. It stays exactly at 90 degrees. And so um, they're just made really, really well. Um, these say Kings on them. So these were Kings connectors. Uh, I bought this lot on eBay quite a while ago. Um, they were, um, advertised as Gore. Now Gore, you might, you might know Gore from Gore-Tex jackets and things like that waterproof equipment. Um, it turns out that the Gore company made a porous Teflon and they made it originally for heart transplants. They made it for artificial um, uh, veins and, and arteries and stuff. And uh, then they started making uh, a coax uh, because they had a foam uh, dielectric. They could make uh, air is the best dielectric, um, but the foam is, is maybe next best. Um, if you don't have, if you have mostly air and, and just a little bit of Teflon. So they, they make some of the world's best coax cable. Now, believe it or not, you can buy a, maybe a, a, maybe a two foot long cable and it will cost you $3,000. One cable with S, SMA to SMA, $3,000. And the reason is that they're controlled over phase, they're controlled over temperature, they're just, they're for VNA use when you really, really need to control the uh, uh, the phase information and so yeah really really expensive cables when i worked in the rf industry you know we had a lot of gore cables and uh, they were very expensive uh, maybe not three thousand but we were paying a thousand each for them i'm sure um, anyway so these are really nice these probably came off some aviation equipment or something they look kind of military or aviation grade and so these are just you know used poles from some pieces of equipment or maybe they're just leftover stock or something. They have a bunch of part numbers, part numbers on them. So, you know, it's like this one, this is P2 mates with about the, the assembly A41K3-2. Anyway, um, and then it tells you where this one goes. This one goes to a 50 ohm termination, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so these were part of some avionics or something. And I, I bought these and I use these all the time in place of the ones that come in the kits. These are just super, super good quality. The other thing that I bought recently was, um, like I said, I had nothing but nightmares with these things. So I bought some replacements. There's a guy on eBay selling these. And uh, so these are, uh, get the shot here, made in the USA. Um, so yeah, these are the real deal. Um, and these are nice. They're not the little RG174, they're nice RG8. Um, so they're a little more robust. Um, yeah, they're not as flexible and not as, not as uh, nice to handle, but uh, I think they should last me. And uh, they have a, uh, a nice connector on them. I don't know. 
I don't know if these are uh, USA made or not. These look a bit Chinese made, but they seem to have a better clamping mechanism. These these tiny little clamping mechanisms for the RG174 uh, don't seem to cut the mustard. And these seem to be really, really stiff and really heavy duty. So these seem to be, these seem to be pretty good. Um, I have some older uh, SMA to SMA. This is probably my highest quality cable I own. I'm not exactly sure who made this one, but you can just tell, tell from it that it's super high quality. And again, these connectors are definitely USA made. These these kind of these kind of feel like uh, feel like these King connectors. Uh, they're oh, a bit different. I dropped them on the floor, so now it's out of calibration. Great. <laughs> Actually, you do have to be careful of these things. But uh, this one has some part numbers on it too, so I'm not sure about not sure about it, but. Yeah, this one is uh, this one is super high quality. Um, so anyway, there you go. Uh, my advice is, um, you know, for the home um, garage, the Chinese stuff is fine. Um, just be aware that uh, sometimes the center pin will push in, so just be on the lookout for that. And uh, Sometimes the only other complaint that I really had was with the BNCs. The BNC machining can be all over the map, and um, what I found is that the the uh, machining is quite poor. The burrs haven't been removed and stuff, and uh, so um, a lot of times these little things that poke out, these little um, uh, bayonet uh, parts that poke out, those are not. There originally, there's there um, the metal is moved. There's a there's a device that scrunches them and and kind of squishes this metal out. And on the Chinese one, sometimes it ends up having a knurl on it too because they do one operation at the same time. So not only does it get scrunched out, but it has a knurl put on it, which is really bad. And so on a lot of the Chinese connectors, I'll go around and I'll uh, take a file and I'll round off the. Uh, I'll round off the little nub here. Um, I've had some of them that I couldn't even put into a connector. They were just too long. They just kind of got hung up when I put them in. And so I had to kind of file them off. Uh, so that's the the, uh, the BNCs. And then, like I said before, the SMAs are just kind of wonky. Uh, they're all wobbly. Don't like those. <laughs>